Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by, appreciate it. So, quite an array. There's more bits up here that are not even showing up on the camera at the second. What I have here is a kit, and I want to put all of this into this little thing right here. And what is this? This is a Nino TNC. This is on the tarpon.net website, and I will share links with all of, about all of this stuff in the description below. Um, the Nino site is ninotnc.org. You can also find references to this all over the tarpon, T-A-R-P-N, I like saying that, tarpon, the tarpon.net website as well. This is a micro TNC. If you watch Ham Nuggets with Temporarily Offline and I every Monday night at 6.30, if you're not, you should be, we try to ham stuff. It's not really a tutorial. It's us trying to figure out how stuff works. Stuff we've never usually messed with before or done before and tinkering with it until it works or goes up in, uh, in smoke. So we've been tinkering with TNCs a lot the past several shows and we've had only mild success. Uh, we've been through several older model TNCs and I'm talking from the 80s and some of them just flat out didn't work. Some of them needed a little bit of TLC, but we have not yet been able to successfully make any kind of con contact through a TNC, a packet radio contact through a TNC. So we have a couple more shows lined up to do TNC things, and one of them is this. So this comes in a multi-part kit. Let me explain. So when you buy the board, and again, links for all this below, when you buy the board, this is what you receive. This particular IC that obviously goes right there based on the size of it, and the board. And that's all you get are those two things right there. The rest of this kit is ordered separately uh, through an electronic supply place. I used Mauser. DigiKey would also have all this. The instructions are incredibly complete and very thorough that explain how to put the kit together. None of this is SMD soldering. As you can see, all of this is going to be pretty much, oh, it's all through hole soldering. So it shouldn't be anything super complicated to solder. Probably the most complicated piece on this is going to be these multi-pin chips in these several places that are marked. Included on the website when you order the kit is a link to a comma separated file that you can look at in Excel and you can upload that file to a site like Mouser, which is again who I used, or DigiKey and I'm sure there's other ones. And they will fill your order based on that comma separated file. Uh, that's called a BOM, Bill of Materials and they have a function on their websites to upload a file. So when you do that, it fills your cart with all the goodness that you specifically need to build the Nino TNC 9600A4. And I, it's not very expensive. I don't remember the price off the top of my head as I'm recording this, but I'll put that information in the description below as well. I want to say all together this is uh, maybe 40 bucks. 35 40 dollars something like that and at the end you will have a fully functional tnc i'm not entirely sure what to do with the tnc yet but i got to get it built first so if you build it they will come tnc used to be much more popular and is still in use today just not as prevalent as it was back in the 70s and 80s 90s kind of thing and there are numerous tncs available still today that you can buy brand new. There are different kinds of TNCs and I don't understand that part yet and I'm not going to get into trying to figure that out in this video. So now one thing I want to mention before we get started with the build montage is I got the list of parts from uh, Mouser here and it tells me how many were ordered and how many they shipped and if there's any on back order. So if you do this procedure Make sure you double check your list and that you don't have anything back order and they were able to fill everything. And of course there's a parts list in the instruction. 
The other thing that I think is very cool, because you look at all this and you're like, oh my gosh, um, I was afraid that all of this would come in one giant bag, and it did, but each part is labeled specifically. Very cool, and as you're building this, then you won't have to try and dig through or test resistance values for all the parts. I may potentially have had a good bit of these parts, but I would have to find all the stuff and sort it out myself, and this is pre-sorted. All right, so what I've done here, before I even get started soldering things to boards, is I've gone through the first three pages of the documentation on the parts, on the parts list. And for example, this is one of the pages, and this isn't gonna show up too well on the camera, but it tells me the part number, R10, and what it is. So I sorted my parts into this box, which is not optimal for these bags, but basically I have it separated by resistors, capacitors, switches, connectors, and anything that ain't a resistor, a capacitor, or a switch and connector, like op amps and some other chips. So that's how I've got everything sorted, and I'm sitting here going through these pages, and I find the specific part after I got everything sorted by basic function, and then I labeled the front of the bag with that specific piece, and I've got the first several pages now in order of parts to install. I'm going to go in order of the instructions because I kind of assume that the instructions are laid out in the order that I need to put everything together. So as I said, what I did is I went through and, and tagged each of the bags with its specific location identifier on the board, Y1, R1, R2, so on and so forth. And as I go, I'm going to get through these first three pages, get these pieces put onto the board in the appropriate places and soldered down, and then I'm going to come back to the next three or four pages. And I'm going to identify each of those bags, label them, and put them in the order that I want to install them in. Get them installed, lather, rinse, repeat. So that's how I'm going to go about doing this. I think you have to do something like this to start organizing and sorting the bits. Otherwise, you're going to have a giant pile of bags all over the table, and it'll take 10,000 forevers because every time you want one small resistor, you have to root through all the bags, and you won't even know where to look. So that's how I've got this laid out.
All right, thank you for sitting through the build montage. I skipped a bunch of it. You know, it's soldering little bits in. The instructions go very well, step by step. I would suggest, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this thing, I kind of sorted out the parts, resistors, capacitors, connectors, IC chips, which included op amps and audio pieces and the USB dingus, this thing, that thing, so on and so forth. <clears throat> there are really not a whole lot of gotchas in this kit. Um, as a matter of fact, there's almost none because if you read his instructions thoroughly, as you do each part, he'll explain anything that might be tricky. You know, one thing is on a particular piece here, and I do want to show you this, this guy right here, one side has two legs that are joined together and the other side does not. There's not a notch, and I don't know if that's going to show up on the camera, there's not a notch on that particular chip to show you which way it goes or to orient it. But again, he mentions in the instructions, orient the chip like this with them two legs that way, so on and so forth. Another cool thing about this kit that is in the instructions is these LEDs. There are multiple versions, and I'm gonna show mine in a second, of 3D printed cases for this. And he said the way to get this spacing is use the end of a USB plug and bend it over the narrow side with the long leg of the LED facing toward the plug end boom, the spacing is perfect. So, I mean, there's really, if you go step by step and take your time and read his instructions for each piece, there's really no major problems in here. Most of the components are not polarized. A resistor obviously will go in in either way. The chips do have polarity and they need to go in a certain way and a few of the other components do as well. But again, it's marked. The transistor needs to go in a certain way. Um, most of the components doesn't matter or they'll only go in one way. The nine pin connector is made to fit on this board with a specific nine pin connector. You can't put it in backwards. Same for the USB. Same for this button here. Um, same for the dip switches. I mean there's just a whole bunch of pieces that can't be put in wrong. And his instructions cover everything. They're very detailed. There is also some testing you can do. And I've done the basic tests um, after I got to that step in the instructions. And that was an LED test. And before we put on the CPU, we also tested power on a couple of legs to make sure we had 3.3 volts. That verified our voltage regulator wasn't hooked up backwards. And that verified nothing would blow up. So I did those steps and then I pressed on. There are several other steps to do full test functions, including transmit and receive loopbacks. And to that end, there's also, and this is cool, test points that he has built in. Receive and transmit test points right there, RXA and TXA. And there's a ground test point. These components are the leftover LED legs that you clipped off from when you put on the LEDs. So we can actually hook an amp, a voice, an audio amp to these, to the ground and the receive or the transmit and hear our audio tones to verify that. Or we can hook them to an oscilloscope and see the signal go out and take a look at the waveform that way. This will probably get live hot tested on ham radio nuggets. I feel pretty confident because I've gone back and, and of course with any kit, you want to go back and check your solders and make sure you don't have any cold solders and make sure everything looks shiny and there's no bits touching that shouldn't be touching. Everything appears to be in perfect work and order. All right, so I mentioned uh, there are 3D printed cases. I found multiple versions of this case, all slightly different. I think this is the original one and I'll post a link to this STL file. I believe I got this off of printables. This goes in here like so. It's a little tricky to get, of course you have to put it in the right way to get in there and get everything to line up because you've got to line up five LEDs in that little button. But once you get those to slide in the correct spot, this is one of those things that it fits, but it only fits an exact certain, there we go, certain angle. And then we have holes in the uh, case that line up with holes in the board. This is the bottom cover for it. That's going to go on like so. 
And then we're going to take and run some, um, and I believe it's probably mentioned in instructions, some screws into there, which will go through the board and mate this top half to the bottom half holding the board in place. And there is our Nino TNC. We can get to any of our dip switch settings here and our LEDs are here. So that is the case. It for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I will have links for all of this information below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. Thanks a lot, y'all. 73.